What's up guys, Houndish here, and today we're jumping in with some pretty interesting Destiny 2 news. And of course it's a Thursday, so we do have some stuff coming in the form of this week at Bungie. They talk about the next Iron Banner for Destiny 2, but then we get straight into Beyond Light stuff, and they do have a list of technical changes that they're making behind the scenes, and how some of that's going to affect performance in the game, but also elements like character customization, lighting on various destinations, but also the preload for Beyond Light as well. And then they talk about new exclusive community emblems for Beyond Light and Year 4, as well as a pretty huge article about how Bungie are introducing dynamic weather to Destiny 2, how that's going to affect gameplay and combat, but even things like weapons as well. So plenty to talk about in the video, guys. And if you do enjoy this one, a rating below very much helps me out. But now let's get into it. And so first things first, we are going to be getting the Iron Banner back in Destiny 2. And so it'll be starting on September 29th next week at 10 a.m. Pacific, which is of course 6 p.m. in the UK at the weekly reset time. All of the Season of Arrivals awards will still be available, and they finished by saying there will be a few more weeks with increased rewards for Vanguard, Crucible, and Gambit. And so it's something to put on the calendar for next week if you want to jump in. And then here, they give us a list of technical changes that they're making to the game for Year 4. And they say many of them are under the hood and won't affect the gameplay experience, although some of them may be a little bit more noticeable. So. We'll give the quick rundown list of things that we may actually notice changing in the game. And so firstly, they've shifted the mission scripting model to run on the physics host instead of the mission host. And they give a bit of a technical explanation behind all of these things, but in terms of what we may notice in the game, they say the new scripting environment changed many behaviours in complex ways, and we may see interesting behaviour changes or bugs in pre beyond light missions. And that's of course because these were originally built and tested on the previous systems. And they say while they have tested these heavily, there'll definitely be a degree of monitoring and fixing remaining bugs over time. And in some cases, these issues were more severe. For example, it caused the Prophecy Dungeon to be unavailable temporarily, and its triumphant return is slated for the end of this year. And so of course Prophecy is coming back, but we now get a bit more info as to why exactly it's going away, and it is of course because of a technical change behind the scenes. But they say one other cool feature will be face-to-face -face joins in social spaces, so you can fire team up with tower friends without a long tower reload. But additionally, they've revamped the content building and patching pipeline for speed and install size. And they say due to these changes, Beyond Light will be a full re-download on all platforms, and we know this will be painful for those with slower and metered internet connections. To help mitigate this, we're planning to enable Beyond Light preloads sometime during the evening of November 9th Pacific Time, which should give at least everyone 10 hours to download before the gates open. And so that's definitely a positive, there will be a little bit of lead time there, but as they say, it's going to be a complete re-download of all of Destiny's content. However, D2's install size will shrink by between 30 and 40%, and that's because of some of the content they're taking out of the game and other optimizations to kind of shrink it. But additionally, they say this change is going to help them ship mission critical fixes faster when game breaking bugs arise, but also allow the teams to work on Destiny releases closer to their actual ship dates. Essentially, it should take Bungie a little bit less time to finalize some of these updates and patches going into the game. They've rebuilt the character face system, and they say, we know that the way your guardians look is important to you, and we've long wanted to add more customization to Destiny. And essentially, they finished by saying that they've made small tweaks to existing player heads in the game, but they're also building a list of guardian face shapes that they plan to bring into the game in the future in order to increase Guardian diversity in Destiny, with the long-term goal of enabling everyone to imagine themselves as their Guardian. And so, essentially, the Guardian's face in-game may look a little bit different. Kind of an interesting one. And finally, they have relit portions of EDZ and Nessus, so during the early stages of Beyond Light production, the Lighting and Skies teams had the desire to provide a visual refresh to the two remaining D2 Year 1 destinations. And so, different lighting on existing destinations is going to be a thing, and the changes are intentional and are meant to bring the visual quality of these spaces up to the current lighting standards, while providing a fresh coat of paint. And so, EDZ and Nessus are going to get some lighting updates and should look a little bit crisper and fresher as of November 10. And so kind of a mixture of technical, but also gameplay changes and how that'll affect things in Beyond Light. As always, give us your thoughts down below. But here, Bungie preview some new community emblems for Year 4. So they say whether it be fashion, art, movie of the week, or the Bungie bounty, they will be issuing new emblems when people achieve those goals in the future. So initially, this will be the new fashion show emblem awarded by Bungie when players submit pictures and things like that of Guardians during the fashion contest. Then there is the new artist emblem, 
And of course, those are for artworks, the bungee feature. And finally, the movie of the week, which is really cool. And with some Clovis Bray themed stuff going on right there. But we should also mention the bungee bounty emblem for year four here as well. Pretty awesome stuff. And then there are some additional emblems they'll be distributing to Bungie Forum mentors, ninjas, and shields, which are the various volunteers that help Bungie moderate online. So pretty cool emblems and things to look out for if you like to get involved in community stuff in year four. Up next, Bungie posted an additional article which is pretty interesting because they break down the environment on Europa, the new destination in Beyond Light, and specifically give us some details about kind of the atmosphere and new things that they're doing to make Europa more interesting as a destination. And that does include dynamic weather for the first time as well. So Bungie said that the developers responsible for the immersive experience on Europa have been wanting to take a crack at a new type of weather system for quite some time. And the desolate, icy and hostile surface of Jupiter's moon offered them the perfect environment for a snowstorm. Europa design lead Alex Veliki recalls, when we were brainstorming and Ed Brennan, the world art lead for Europa, proposed the idea of blizzards to help sell the fantasy of the harsh environment. I thought it would be awesome if design had direct control over it and it didn't take long for everyone to get excited about the implementation. And so the task of making a brutal bungee blizzard began. And initially, they said that they actually tested features like slowing player movement, as well as altering grenade paths, and even knocking players off sparrows, which are certainly some interesting ideas. And they said that it was painfully unfun and made doing anything in the game almost impossible. So they iterated a lot to find a delicate balance between seeming dangerous without actually disorienting, being oppressive or negatively impacting core gameplay. And so it will be interesting to see if any of the weather still has kind of physical effects, although based on what they said, it sounds like those things would be pretty subtle. But they go on to say most weather in Destiny is fairly simple. And because of this, most of the relevant systems are things our skies, VFX and lighting teams set up and then leave to run consistently. But the team wanted to play with that consistency to be able to control the weather to create some intense and dynamic moments. The resulting system actually is a script controlled and fully networked way of controlling weather in Destiny. Destiny. Potentially gives Bungie some kind of real-time control of it as well, but also helps to match the weather in different players' games and stuff like that. And they say that dynamic weather is a huge step forward for the Destiny team. And so working on this, they watched a lot of reference material from nature documentaries, movies, and video games. And they've settled on a handful of variables that, when blended, can organically grow or diminish a storm based on the needs of the story. And so, weather on Europa comes in three basic flavours. They say initially, the first has no storm at all, and this is what Europa would look like without the weather system active. Clear skies, fresh snow, and essentially the smoothest sailing that we're going to do on Europa. But then during a light storm, we can see that the wind picks up, snowfall increases around us. But they say it's largely aesthetic. The light storm blots out the sun and completely obscures the starry sky, which in itself dramatically changes the feel of the destination. But then finally, when the heavy storm hits, the sky is heavily obscured, the wind roars and the snow flurries become more violent, the mid-ground is difficult to see, and, if not for faintly visible silhouettes, it would be nearly impossible to navigate at all. Players are encouraged to stick closer to cover and move with intent. So they finish by saying, it's worth remembering that just because the weather picks up, it doesn't mean the moon's combatants disappear. So, with nearly zero visibility and a fallen kel to stop, it might not hurt to pack a thermal scope. And there are going to be thermal scopes on the new Europa set of weapons that we can see here. Pretty good example from the trailer, actually. When they're holding the weapon at the hip, in the background, you can faintly see the eye of a harpy here. But essentially, no other enemies are actually visible. And in the next frame, once they've aimed down sights, we can see a series of enemies actually through the snow, primed and ready for combat. So, of course, an interesting combat element in itself on the destination. And although we do have different highlight scopes already in the game, it'll be interesting to see if any of them are mixed up with that thermal capacity specifically for what we're seeing on Europa. Pretty awesome stuff and definitely give us your thoughts about it down below, guys. A final shout right here is that we have another month of Twitch Prime loot. So if you do want to get September's Prime loot drop, then you can pick up the Colony as well as the Sneak Attack Ornament, which may be useful even if you already have the weapon. But also the Motherload Exotic Sparrow and the Grim Fox Legendary Ship. All of them are going to be drops in the Twitch Prime bundle this month. So if you signed up to Prime, you're able to claim that right now and I'll leave the links for the blog post down below. But otherwise, for today, guys, that is everything that we have to speak about in this video. So give us your thoughts on that pretty exciting weather system that we're going to see on Europa. 
Can't wait to explore the destination and find some of the secrets hidden there. I would imagine, especially with a new destination of this size, there'll be a lot of endgame content there that we can check out. So the exploration element of Destiny is going to be a bit more interesting alongside that expansion as well. So drop your thoughts down in the comment section. But if you've enjoyed the video, a rating below very much helps me out. And also get subscribed so that I can keep you posted with the world of Destiny 2. However, for now, I hope you guys have an awesome day.